Today's topic of discussion is glaucoma. Hello, I am Dr. Shanaz Malay and welcome to Pharmacomania. So we are going to discuss glaucoma. So what is so what is glaucoma? Glaucoma is a group of diseases characterized by a progressive form of the optic nerve damage. Normal range of the intraocular tension is 10 to 20 mmHg. If it rises above the 21 mmHg, so glaucoma can precipitate and it causes optic nerve can damage. This figure shows that formation of the aqueous humor from the ciliary process. Ciliary process are ciliary muscle as well as ciliary body. So this aqueous humor from uh, released from the aqueous, uh, ciliary body and 90% of the aqueous humor drained through the trabecular meswork. If trabecular meswork is blocked, then drainage of the aqueous humor will be hampered and intraocular tension can raise. Now classification of the glaucoma. Glaucoma usually are two type congenital by born or acquired. Acquired are primary and secondary. Primary is divide again classified into two group primary open angle glaucoma and primary closer angle glaucoma and secondary glaucoma due to any secondary disease or due to any injury. So first is the primary open angle glaucoma. This is the most common form of the glaucoma. It occurs when fluid drainage is poor, but fluid formation is normal. So it increases the pressure because the drainage is poor. It increases the pressure and can cause, uh, cause damage the optic nerve and exact mechanism is unknown. So this is the uh, angle when, uh, when the drainage is blocked. So drainage will be poor and increase the intraocular tension. So primary angle closer glaucoma is the emergency condition and occur when the iris itself block the drainage angle and result in sudden increase the pressure. Symptom includes severe eye pain, nausea, eye redness and very blurred vision. Immediate treatment is required for primary angle closer glaucoma. Now these are the various mode of the treatment. First is the alpha receptor are present on the vessel of the ciliary body. Ciliary body epithelium contain alpha 2 receptor. These are the alpha 2 receptor and beta 2 also present in the ciliary body epithelium and carbonic and hydrase enzyme also present in ciliary body. So these are the major mechanism which is uh, used in the treatment of the glaucoma. Now topical drug for the glaucoma there are five groups, beta blockers, alpha agonist, prostaglandin analog, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and myotex. So first group is the beta blocker, imolol, bitexolol, levobinolol, cartiolol, imolol, bitoxolol, levobinolol and cartiolol. These are the beta blockers. Alpha agonists are dipivaprine. Epraclonidin, bimonidin, dipivaprine, epraclonidin, bimonidin. Third group is prostaglandin analog. Drugs are latinoprost, tevoprost, bimetoprost. These are the prostaglandin analog. Fourth group is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, dozolamide, brinzolamide. Fifth group is myotics like pilocarpine and physostigmine. These are the five group for the drug for glaucoma. So therapeutic uh, of the glaucoma, chief therapeutic measures is uh, to lower the intraocular tension either by reducing secretion of the aqueous humor or by promoting drainage of the aqueous humor. Now classification according to mechanism of action of the drug. So first group is the drug that reduces aqueous humor secretion. So drug that beta blocker alpha agonist and carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. These three drugs inhibit or reduce the secretion or formation of the aqueous humor. Second group is the increase the trabecular outflow. Drugs are myotics, prostaglandin and alpha agonist. These three drugs increases the trabe <coughs> trabecular outflow. Third group is the drug that increase UVO, UVO scleral outflow drugs are prostaglandin analog and alpha agonist. So first group is the beta blocker. Beta blockers are timolol, bitexolol, levobinolol and cartiolol. 
these are the beta blocker so what is the mechanism of beta blocker so first is the beta blocker receptor are present on the ciliary epithelium and down regulation of adenylyl cyclase ciliary epithelium and decrease production of the uh, aqueous humor and second effect due to the reduction in ocular outflow beta 2 receptors are present at the ciliary body epithelium these are the beta 2 receptors beta 2 receptors are present at the ciliary body epithelium which down regulate the adenylyl cyclase uh, pathway and reduce the secretion of aqueous humor Timolol is non selective and act on beta 1 as well as beta 2 receptor and ocular hypotension effect is smooth and sustained and 20 to 35 percent fall in intraocular tension and after chronic use uh, the effect will be sustained and if one to two dose is missed there will be no effect due to discontinuation due to because persistent two to three week after discontinuation the effect will be remain and high level of the clinical safety is there for timolol now bitoxolol it is the beta 1 selective drug and less side effect due to selectivity toward the beta 1 is more but less uh, hypotensive ocular hypotensive effect because beta 2 receptor are present on the uh, ciliary epithelium so less uh, ocular hypotensive effect can occur but also less side effect like uh, central metabolic and bronchospasm occur uh, additional protective effect on the retinal neurons independent of the intraocular lowering and less efficacious in the as compared to timolol third group and third drug is the levobunolol it is longer acting so od once daily can uh, congener of it is the congener of the timolol and it can and still once in a day local side effect of the beta blocker are stinging redness and dryness of the eye corneal hypoesthesia uh, allergic diphthoconjunctivitis and blurred vision are local side effect when systemic side effect due to absorption through the nasolacrimal duct uh, systemic side effect occur like uh, life threatening uh, life threatening bronchospasm occur in asthmatic patient uh, bradycardia arrhythmia heart failure in elderly patient and cns effect like uh, depression anxiety confusion drowsiness and disorientation occur in CNS side effects. Advantages of topical beta blockers are uh, no change in pupillary size, so no diminution of uh, vision in dim light and patient with a cataract like uh, pilocarpin or physostigma. No induced myopia which is especially troublesome in younger patient and no headache bro pain due to persistent spasm of iris and ciliary muscle no fluctuation of intraocular pressure and uh, which occur with the pilocarpid drops and convenient uh, twice or once application is sufficient alpha adrenergic agonists like uh, dpwafrin epraclonidin and brimonidin these all are act on the alpha receptors alpha adrenergic agonist drug a non selective alpha as well as beta um, agonist are adrenaline and dipimephrine when alpha 2 agonist are epraclonidin brimonidin are the alpha 2 agonist so alpha 1 receptor action is vasoconstriction of, of the ciliary vessel and decrease aqueous formation alpha 2 uh, receptor action is decrease secretion and uh, secretory activity of the ciliary epithelium and enhance uveoscleral outflow so beta aqueous action uh, increase hydraulic activity of the trabecular filtration and enhance trabecular outflow. Alpha 1 receptors are present at the ciliary body vessel. So, vasoconstriction occur of uh, ciliary blood vessel and reduce the formation of the aqueous humor. And alpha 2 receptors are present at the uh, ciliary body epithelium and which is uh, reduce the secretion of aqueous humor. Adrenergic agonists like adrenaline and dipivaprine. Adrenaline is uh, act on the alpha 1, alpha 2 and beta receptor on the ciliary body and increase uveous lateral outflow. It uh, poorly, um, uh, poor uh, penetration of the cornea. So, action will be less. 
ocular smarting and vasoconstriction ocular, ocular tolerance can occur but it is not used as poor corneal penetration dipivaprin is the pro drug of the adrenaline so it penetrate cornea and ester hydrolyzed into adrenaline now after penetration of the cornea it is uh, act on the alpha 1 alpha 2 and beta receptor so it is better to better tolerated longer acting and add on therapy to poorly control patient epiaclonidine and bimonidine both are uh, clonidine congener and uh, epiaclonidine poor polar don't process the blood brain barrier topical application lower the intraocular pressure by 25 percent by acting on the alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptor Side effects are uh, dermatitis, follicular conjunctivitis, mydiasis, eyelid retraction, retraction, dryness of mouth and nose. And short term uses to control the spike after tuberculoplasty or iridotomy. And uh, bremoclonidine are more selective to alpha 2 congener and more lipophilic. So uh, easily penetrate to cornea. Side effects are same as the epraclonidine but less frequent and uh, add-on therapy for short as well as long-term use. Local adverse effect of adrenergic agonist are um, eyelid detection, lead edema, dermatitis, conjunctival hyperemia, irritation, allergy, follicular conjunctivitis, mitriasis, cystoid macular edema in the aphetic eye, and systemic adverse effect like hypertension due to vasoconstriction due to peripheral uh, resistance eh, due in non-selective agent and hypotension occur in alpha-2 adrenergic agonist, headache, fatigue, syncope, anxiety, insomnia and depression can occur uh, due to systemic absorption of the uh, adrenergic agonist. Adrenergic agonist drug clinically used as add-on therapy, ipraclonidine used for the short-term treatment and primonidine for long-term as well as short-term therapy. Now, third group is the prostaglandin analog, latinoprost, trevoprost, and uh, bimetoprost. These are the prostaglandin analog. Now, mechanism of action of the prostaglandin analog. So, it is a pro drug converted into prostaglandin F2 alpha, and action on the epithelial vessel, increase permeability of the tissue in ciliary muscle, and increase uveoscleral outflow and lower the intraocular pressure. Down regulation of the ciliary COX-2 has been found in open angle glaucoma. So, uh, latinoprost is the prostaglandin analog and uh, reduce intraocular tension up to 25 to 35% efficacy is similar to beta blocker timolol. Local side effects are blurring of vision, increased iris pigmentation and thickening of the eyelashes. Systemic adverse effect of uh, prostaglandin analogs are upper respiratory tract symptoms like flu-like symptoms, headache, precipitation of migraine, and muscle and joint pain and skin rashes can occur due to prostaglandin analog. And local uh, adverse effect are like uh, conjunctival hyperemia and foreign body sensation, blurring of vision, thickening, lengthening, and increase in number of the eyelashes. Uh, iris hyperpigmentation, increased severity and recurrence of herpetic keratitis, uh, anterior uveitis and macular edema can occur due to prostaglandin analog. Now clinical status of prostaglandin analogs are it is first choice drug because good efficacy similar as the beta blocker like timolol 25 to 30 percent reduction in intraocular tension once daily application is sufficient absence of systemic side effect well sustained action and only disadvantage is that is costly uh, latinoprost and trevoprost are similar as a uh, timolol it is it reduces 25 to 30 percent of the intraocular tension but uh, uh, bimetoprost is reducing more effective in lowering intraocular tension and some patient may tolerate it better Now, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, acetazolamide and drosolamide, these are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. 
So carbonic anhydrous inhibitor. Uh, limit the bicarbonate and ciliary epithelium and aqueous humor production reduces. So uh, systemic and oral drug are acetazolamide and topical are prozolamide. So carbonic anhydrous enzyme is present in the ciliary epithelium. So uh, acetazolamide and drosolamide uh, inhibit this uh, carbonic anhydrous enzyme and uh, reduces the formation of the aqueous humor. Oral therapy with acetazolamide used to supplement ocular hypotensive drug for short term indication like uh, angle closer uh, before and after ocular surgery. Uh, systemic side effect like paresthesia, anorexia, hypokalemia, acidosis, malaise and depression can occur due to oral therapy with acetazolamide. Restrict long term use due to a few cases in which target intraocular tension is not achieved even by concurrent use of 2 to 3 topical drugs. So, acetazolamide can be given in this condition. Drosolamide topically developed to uh, circumvent systemic side effect of the acetazolamide. Somewhat less efficacy than timolol. It reduces uh, less than 20% of intraocular tension. Ocular singeing, burning, itching, corneal edema and bitter taste are the usual side effect and systemic side effects are very there and drosolamide is used only as an add-on therapy to the to um, topical beta blocker as well as prostaglandin analog when these drugs are contraindicated. Now meiotics, meiotics a mechanism of action of the meiotics like chysostigmine and pilocarpine lower the intraocular tension by increasing ciliary muscles tone uh, thereby improving potency of the trabecular measure. Till 1970, topical uh, application of pilocarpine and uh, anti cholinesterase were uh, standard anti glaucoma drug. However, because of the several topic and better availability of the drug, so these drugs are uh, not used. It is the only last option. The current approach to treatment of open angle glaucoma is the first choice is monotherapy with latinoprost or topical beta blocker like timolol. Uh, if the target intraocular tension is not attained, either change over the alternative drug, use both uh, both of the above concurrently. Uh, Brimonidine or dosalamide is occasionally or occasionally tepivaflin are used only when there are contraindication of prostaglandin analog or beta blocker or to supplement their action. Topical meiotic or oral acetazolamide are Added only as a last resort. Meiotic induced myopia can occur, lead to visual blurring. So, meiotic uh, may not be tolerated by younger patient. Patient in associated disease like beta blo blocker in asthma, COPD, and serious diseases, beta blocker is contraindicated. Uh, in history of uh, nephrolithiasis, renal stone, uh, it is uh, carbonic anhydrase is contraindicated. And patient with intake lens directly acting meiotics like uh, are preferred over anticholinesterase may accelerate cataract formation. Angle closer glaucoma, narrow angle glaucoma, acute congestive glaucoma. These all are syn synonyms for the acute closer glaucoma. So here aridocorneal junction, uh, aridocorneal angle is very narrow. So block the flow of the aqueous humor. So, it occurs in individual with a narrow aridocorneal angle and shallow anterior chamber. Intraocular pressure remains normal until attack is precipitated. Intraocular tension is raised very high 40 to 60 mmHg. It is an emergency condition. Vigorous therapy should be needed and treatment, a definitive treatment like a surgical or laser iridotomy. Medical therapy uh, for the termination of the attack. Now, next group is the meiotic, how it works. Contraction of the sphincter pupil changes in direction of force in iris or lessen it. Contraction with the lens and spread the iris mass centrally. Pupillary block is removed and iridocorneal ankle is freed. However, when the intraocular tension is very high, iris muscle fails to respond to meiotic. So, tension should be reduced by the other measure before the meiotic can act. So, this is the 
hydroconeal angle closed angle glaucoma and due to the uh, dilatation of the pupil um, angle become narrow and drainage canal canal of stem become blocked so drainage of the epidermal is blocked so medical therapy to reduce intraocular tension is the hypertonic mannitol 20% or glycerol to decongest eye by the osmotic action second is the acetazolamide 0.5 g iv followed by oral twice daily concurrently and third is the meiotic after above therapy intraocular tension once starting falling pilocarpine 1 to 4 percent is instilled every 10 minute initially and then longer interval topical beta blocker like uh, timolol 0.5 percent every 12 hourly and epiclonidine and latanoprost if needed thank you for watching the video